All right, so it's winter here in Chicago, which means it's spooking cold outside. Uh, it's literally gonna be one degree tomorrow. So I want some hot meats, many, many meats for my, for my large tum. But I also don't wanna do anything really. I want this to be as easy as possible. Isn't that the American dream sort of, you know? We're gonna test four extremely popular ways that people slow cook meats at home. When I say slow cook, we're talking about a slow and wet environment, basically a brazier of stew. We got a crock pot. We're gonna be testing an Instapot. A lot of pots here. Uh, a Dutch oven, which is also technically a pot. And a sous vide, of course. At the end of the day, I have one question that I need answered, and that is which of these cooking styles yields the best flavor to effort ratio? All right. Here we got some pork shoulder, it's a tough cut. I chose it because it's super flavorful and cost efficient. We're gonna treat all of these the exact same. I'm using the same aromatics, they're gonna taste the same. The difference are going to be in the techniques that we are going to explore today. So in theory, each one of these pieces should kind of have a certain mouthfeel and eat differently than the last. So we're gonna figure out which one I like the most and which is best. It's important that we sear our protein before putting it in whichever cooking vessel you're used to, right? If you own a crock pot, um, you know, chances are maybe you grew up or saw your parents just throwing stuff in a crock pot, clicking the button and like going to work, which is beautiful in its own way, right? It's the reason the crock pot exists. But if you want to really elevate your food and make it a lot better, this is a really simple step that will do that. So we're going to sear them off on high heat. This looks like a lot of salt, I know, but you need to use all this salt because it's a big piece of protein and you need to be able to penetrate that meat, make it flavorful, and then when you're dropping it into a braising liquid that is not seasoned, of course, it's gonna sort of dissipate, so a lot of salt. These are fatty cuts of meat. We don't need any oil here. Let's give it a sear. Look at all that camel nation. What sound do camels make? Do they moo? Do camels moo? Shut the fuck up. They hiss? Jesus Christ, you just like secured my next set of nightmares. Remember, brown food is flavorful food. So the more kind of like crusty, caramelized Maillard reaction sort of situation you can get going on your protein, the better. The humble crock pot. Man, I probably haven't used one of these since college, but they are useful. I feel like everyone in America, their family has one of these like, you know, in a cabinet tucked away somewhere that's maybe whipped out one or two times during the winter. Great for soups, great for stews. This thing is kind of like the poster child of convenience. You put things in a pot, you click the button, go to work, walk your dog, play some World of Warcraft, cry a little bit in your closet, and your food's done. So we have our protein seared off. Let's talk aromatics. All right, so starting here, we have our thyme and our bay leaf here, which is gonna add sort of this like, you know, hearty winter herb herbaceousness to the dish. We have our orange, which is gonna add a little bit of acidity and sweetness. A chili for a bit of fruity spice. If you don't like spicy food, you can leave it out. And then we have the allium family, which is a fancy way of saying onion family, right? We got a half a white onion, a scallion, and a few cloves of garlic. Between all this, our salt and our pepper, it's going to give us a pretty flavorful, but neutral flavor profile. Okay, let's get these things in the crock pot. We're gonna nestle in our pork butt, the orange, whole rind and everything, zip thyme, bay leaf, chile, half an onion, scallion, tree cloves garlic. Here I have some chicken stock. You can use any flavorful liquid you'd like. I'm just gonna fill it to, I don't know, call it like the shoulders of the pork, if you will. Easy as that. <laughs> low and high, are you kidding me? What exactly does that mean, Crock-Pot? <laughs> the low cook setting on a Crock-Pot ranges between 164 and 182. I'm not sure how there's not like a precise temperature. Maybe at the factory they're just like, eh, 172, 182, 167. So I don't know, we're gonna go high because people are saying that it's in the 200, 205 degree range, which for us in all intents and purposes is perfect because that's kind of like lower braising temperatures. Okay, let's go attempt this Instapot. <laughs> The Instant Pot, AKA the digitized pressure cooker. And if you don't know what a pressure cooker is, it's this thing. 
This is what a, you know, regular ass pressure cooker looks like. In general, pressure cookers are really awesome because they basically cut the time you need to cook tough cuts and other slow cooked foods in half. It can be in quarters, it doesn't matter. It makes it so much faster. And that's because under pressure, you can actually take the temperature of the environment and of water and allow it to boil at higher temperatures, which means you cook your food faster because it's just hotter in the vessel. That can be a little intimidating, a little scary. And it's actually pretty funny because I'm much more confident using that actual pressure cooker than this thing here. Man, that is satisfying. <laughs> All right, this thing gets brownie points for being the most tactical our pork butt. You can actually sear in this thing, which is actually pretty convenient. I chose not to. Same thing as last time, onion, orange, scallion, garlic, chili, thyme, bay leaf. Flavorful liquid in the form of chicken stock. You don't need a ton of liquid in these pressure cookers, or at least in my regular pressure cooker. All right, let's try to figure this thing out. Off, that's not good, let's turn it on. What the hell's going on here? It's beeping at me, man. I don't know why we need like an R2-D2 layout on a pressure cooker, it doesn't make any sense. Um, so it's on. Oh, okay, we're getting places now, all right. Let's do slow cook, okay. Okay, nope, all right, great. Okay, so we want it for a pressure cooker, this small amount of protein. I'm thinking we want to rock like an hour and a half, probably. Does that mean it's working? Let's just move on to the other thing. This one I'm very familiar with, very comfortable with. It might be my favorite way to braise, uh, at least for the time being. It's a Dutch oven. It's just a really heavy cast iron pot, in our case, an enameled cast iron pot. Do you hear that? All right, the Instapot's hissing at us, kind of like a camel. We're gonna try to ignore it. Basically, we're gonna put things in a pot, our meat, our liquid, our aromatics, pop it in a low oven and cook it until it's tender. Simple as that. Some of you cooks out there might be cringing at the way that I'm doing things now. Generally, what I would do is I'd sear my meat in this pot here, deglaze it with the liquid to kind of like harvest that flavor from the fond and the caramelized burnt end bits. But for the sake of convenience, I just went ahead and seared all this stuff ahead of time. Um, it's just easier. If you're doing big batch stuff like this uh, for a party too, it's just easier. Instapot, chill. Oh, I hate that thing. <laughs> while, while we're on the topic of this and that hiss and that, that spookiness of it all. Pressure cookers back in the day were built like not well. Nowadays with like a new, just regular pressure cooker like the one I showed you before, they're safe as heck. They really don't blow up anymore and they're Swiss made and you know those guys are very precise. <laughs> you know, at least the brand that I have. So pressure cookers are great, very useful and um, we'll see, man. We'll see about this like future one, but yeah. In with our pork shoulder, orange, onion, Garlic, scallion, bay leaves, thyme, and a chili. Just gonna hit it with the rest of the stock. So now we're gonna pop this in the oven. Cold oven, very important, keep it cold. In the middle of the oven, we're going low. We're gonna do 200 for the first one or two hours, and then we're gonna bump the heat up to 250 for the remaining time until it turns tender. And I should probably mention, all of these proteins are going to be finished at different times. I'm cooking them all until they're perfectly fork tender, until you can slide a fork or a knife in and out of that protein, and I know it's soft, supple, and delicious. Ugh! Sous vide, sous vide, the immersion circulator, the water bath. This thing is amazing, I love it. It's probably a little tropey and a little like chefy of me to say how much I love it, but it's just so useful for so many different things. I'm not gonna get too into it right now, but yeah, let's just bag up our protein. Please don't blow a fuse. And we're gonna start that up. Sous vide and bagging, right? If you have a vacuum sealer in some bags, go ahead, whip those out, use them if you got them. You can also just use a Ziploc bag or just any other like plastic bag and you'll be just fine. I'll show you how to do that. I like flipping the rim so if you get any like juices on the rim, it like kind of contains the, the mess. We're gonna take our beautiful seared, juicy looking beauty, plop it in there. And you already know the drill. Orange, onion, chili, garlic, thyme. Scallion, bay leaf. So once you plop this in the water, the water will actually push out most of the air that's contained in this bag. So you can kind of see, like look right here. It's obviously not quite a vac seal, but it's pretty contained. We're really pushing out most of that air right now. Let's put our little clips on here. So 
to keep things from floating up, I'll just weigh it down with something. I'll just use a dinner plate, honestly. That'll get the job done. This sous vide here is gonna go for 24 hours at 154 Fahrenheit. So naturally you're gonna get some evaporation with that. You might have to add water one or two times just to make sure it's topped off. Just keep an eye on it, it's not hard, you'll, you'll notice it. Now we play the waiting game. Oh, <laughs> yo, I think it's ready. All right, so several hours have gone by. Everything is finished. Let's, uh, let's open our first guy here in the Instapot. Mm-hmm. That is shreddy. Next up, we got the good old trusty crock pot. Every dad's best friend. Definitely looking good. Oh yeah, look at that. All right, Dutch Ovi. Great. Last but certainly not least, the sous vide here. The way I cook this, it would take 24 hours to get tender to the brazy point that we wanted. So, I made this yesterday. This is the exact same stitch we got going on, just um, a different piece of pork. It almost looks cured. Totally different color than the other ones. It smells different too. Sous vide, gorgeous, beautiful, awesome. All right, cool. All right, all of the meats are finished cooking. There are some similarities and differences in all of these, but now it's time for the blind taste test to see which one of these actually is the best. So I'm gonna leave the room. My guys here are gonna set up a little taste test for me and uh, we'll take it from there. Look what we got here. The frog chopsticks seem appropriate. I think I'll go uh, reverse reading order because I can't read. Let's try this one first, okay. It looks, um, honestly, a little on the drier side. Um, still moist, still juicy. This is a fatty cut, so that fat's gonna make it kind of seem a little more juicy. Solid enough, I guess. On to the next one. I'm gonna go for a little bit of the crusty bits. Okay, two's a little juicier. Two has a little more moisture on it. All right, what do we got here? Ooh, this is looking nice and nice and fatty. It's like the fat is like really distributed. Hmm. It tastes more porky. Some people might think that's a little off-putting, but this one, the pork is definitely coming through over the other two here. Extremely moist. I mean, I don't know if you can see that, but there's like, it's almost like the fat is completely married into the protein here. All right, last but not least, similar to one and two, I think. Two and four are very similar, very, very similar. In texture, in fattiness, in like the, the moist meter levels are both like right, right about there, that same like kind of like mid-level moist meter. This is definitely the moistest. Okay, bad news first, let's talk about the least favorite. I think it's gonna be number one, honestly. It's drier than the other ones. It's shreddy and it's nice, and if you pop sauce all over that, it will be good, of course, but it's just a little drier. That's straight up the only answer there for that. My most favorite has got to be this guy right here. This just super fatty, perfectly shreddy. It's great, man. And it's so porky. It's like, it's crazy. It's awesome. Yeah. What do you think they are? What do I think they are? Crock-Pot. Ah, this is tough, man. I think Instapot is, is here. Dutch oven's here, sous vide's here. All right, let's check. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> Crock-Pot. Okay, I was right. One for one, let's go. Mm. Instapot. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Sous vide. Obviously. And of course mm. the Dutch Avi. Okay. 50%. That's, that could be passing in some circles, right? The crock pot. Man, this is just, I mean, you can just tell right off the bat, this is the driest one. The crock pot is like I was talking about, sort of that beacon of convenience, you know, spanning from whenever the hell it was invented, probably sometime in the 70s or 80s to now. Technology has evolved. <laughs> um, the crock pot's great for like dips, soups, parties, keeping things warm out in like a buffet setting. You can yield a lot better results using any of these techniques here. Um, and it's just to me worth it. But convenience wise, it is pretty high tier. I was beefing with the Instapot, but it, it's, a, it's a smart idea. It's digitizing and bringing pressure cookers to the masses. It's 
probably the best for when it comes to getting the job done the quickest. For me, there's nothing more classic than just a regular good old braise in a Dutch oven. You sear your meat, you get that fond off, you pop it in the oven at low temperatures until it's tender. Easy as pie. I think every home cook should know how to make a simple braise in a Dutch oven. Is it the most convenient? It's kind of a Sunday thing. You kind of have to be around and you have to be in the kitchen, not babying it, but you know, um, I suppose you can keep your oven on and like go out and do errands. Like, you know, I'm not condoning that. Only you can prevent forest fires. There's something romantic about it. I love these big, heavy cast iron pots. I think they're beautiful. You can cook anything in these. Convenience wise, it's probably in the mid to low tier but flavor wise it's classic man it's just um gets the job done there's not really much to be said it's very no frills the sous vide is an amazing tool whether you're in a home cook or a restaurant because it is just so precise it definitely takes the longest this cooked for 24 hours and all this other stuff was done between two and six hours but talk about convenience and just kind of like setting and forgetting you pop this thing in the corner it, you know you plug it into an outlet you're not worried about it catching fire or the gas being on or anything of that nature. I'm not gonna get into it now, this is a whole topic for a whole nother video. You know, if you bring a protein to a certain temperature and then another certain temperature and another certain temperature, each one will yield different results. From steaky to shreddy to pull apart. I mean, look at this end result here. As far as pulled pork goes, the fat is like interwoven into the meat and we didn't sous vide with any liquids, so it was essentially braising in its own juices that it created. Super convenient, I highly recommend getting a sous vide. I love sous vide, um, it's, it's been around for a long time and it will continue to be here so long as uh, it creates product like this. So the takeaway here, if you're cold, hungry, and tired, the crock pot and the sous vide are both gonna get the job done, they're both gonna give you a dandy end result, but if I were you, I would probably lose the crock pot and get with the sous vide. There's a lot more control with the sous vide, it takes up a lot less space, and for braising meat, it's just superior. Okay, so now that we have like 17 pounds of leftover pork here, let me show you how I'd throw together a quick, easy dinner. What do you do with a bunch of shredded meat? You put out some random stuff, get some tortillas, and have yourself a taco night. Grab yourself some shredded proteins, in our case, pork. Kind of going for like a carnitas vibe, not really. I'm gonna go a little pico, guanato, salsa verde. Gotta do the onions. And then some limon, we'll keep it simple, baby, you know? Look at that. Then curl and tuck. I hope this helped. Um, if you liked the video, like the video. If you're new to the chan, subscribe to the chan. If you're not new to the chan, welcome back, mate. That's pretty much all I got from you. The easiest way to support us is over on the Patreon. Five bucks a month, join the grocery fund. We would really appreciate it. And of course, if you can't, no worries. Come say what up in Discord. We just started this new tab in the Discord called the Cookbook Club, where we choose one recipe every couple of weeks. I'm just like spitting up taco meat everywhere and cook that and then take pictures of it and talk about it and it's really fun and nerdy and exciting so if you're into cooking come check out the discord that's all i got for you this time so until next we meet adios